Hello YouTube, I'm Andrew Does Hair. I work at the Young American Salon in Tustin, California, and you can find my work on Instagram at Andrew Does Hair. This is my client, Ryan. He is a director of photography. Um, he does like cinematography work, really fancy, classy, high-end stuff. Check out his work on Instagram at Ryan Wormich. Wormich? Wormich? I don't know, ask him. So Ryan is growing his hair out long, but along the way, we're taking stops here and there to shape it up and just make sure that he feels pretty. And something about Ryan's head, not to put him on blast here, but he's got kind of a flat head in the back. His occipital bone is a little bit on the flat side. And so whenever his hair starts to grow out and it gets bushy down at the bottom there, he feels like the back of his head is just super flat. So what we're doing today is we're going to preserve all the length on top and in the front. And we're not going to cut any of that off, but we're just going to tidy him up around the edges. And more importantly, we're going to take all that weight at the bottom and we're going to push it upward to sort of build an occipital bone out of hair. So to begin with, I'm going to take a section of hair here horizontally about the right temple, and I'm going to cut it to just long enough to lay back. And then as I work up the side of the head, each new section I'm going to bring down to the previous section, and the previous section will be pulled straight out off of the head as a guide. So essentially, the guide section is sticking straight out parallel to the floor. The new section above it is coming down to the guide. When I do this from the bottom to the top of the head, what it's going to do is create a kind of diagonal shape that roughly should echo like the shape of the cheekbone. It kind of like fits the head real nicely that way. This is um, it's my new favorite way to cut hair. I'm doing horizontal sections on everybody. I just, I feel like it just fits so well. Anyways, once I finish that panel, I'm going to continue taking sections uh, diagonally through the back of the head and across the back of the head, doing the same thing that I was just doing. Now down at the very bottom, I'm not going to get super short here because I know I'm going to scissor over comb that later. So I don't want to cut it now and then blow dry it and then cut it again. So that, you know, first couple inches down at the bottom, I'm just going to leave really sloppy for the time being. But again, I'm pulling new sections down to the previous section, which is being pulled straight out off the head. However, as I start getting up close to the occipital bone, again, where his head tends to sit a little bit flatter than most, I'm going to begin to alter my course. So I'm going to check here and see about where my weight line is beginning to build up. And it's right about the edge of the occipital bone. Don't, don't mind that sloppy parting right there. I'll, I'll do better. So what I'm going to start doing to deviate from a, you know, just a regular standard haircut in order to compensate for this flat head is as I get near the occipital bone, the back of the middle of the head, I'm going to start elevating my sections less and less. And so every time I grab one of these diagonal panels here, as I start cutting it near the side of the head, I'm going to pull it straight out parallel to the floor. Well, down to the, the previous section, which is pulled out parallel to the floor. And then as I work back, I'm going to start lowering my section more and more until eventually it's like almost straight down in the middle there. Now, haircutting basics, haircutting 101, the higher you lift something, the softer it falls. And so if I'm pulling that hair back there straight down to be cut, it's going to pile up on itself, kind of like a bowl haircut, which is what I want it to do to sort of build that shape back there. I want it to just stack up on top of itself and create a big bump on the back of the head to give the illusion of a, a rounder, fuller head shape. And here again, you can see the further I move back and lower on the head, the less I'm going to elevate that section as I cut it. And you can start to see a really heavy weight line building up back there. Typically, I continue this on the right until I'm just starting to pull hairs from the left to the right. Once I'm doing that, I know that I'm going to cut the hair on the left anyways, so I don't go too much further. But there we have it, half a weight line. Oh, that's right. I forgot to cut the left temple. So I'm going to do the same thing over here, horizontal section parallel to the floor, just long enough to bend and lay back. And same thing with subsequent sections moving up the head. I'm going to pull them down to the previous section, which is coming straight off of the head. Now, something I didn't point out when I was cutting the right side of the head is as I get to these top uh, pieces of hair off the top of the head, I am going to change my finger angle to preserve more length at the front here. And I did that on the other side. I just forgot to point it out. You can see it a little bit better on this side. So rather than just, you know, cutting a straight panel across the head, I am angling my fingers and my cutting angle to preserve more length at the front of the head because we don't want to cut those hairs. We want those to be the longest because that's, that's essentially the core of growing out his hairs. We need that eventually to be all the way to the back of his head, so I don't want to cut it. But everything else, you know, I can cut down for the time being to keep it tidy along the way, keep it shapely. I don't know about tidy. This is not the tidiest haircut. As you would guess, I'm going to do on the left side here the same thing I did on the right side with these diagonal sections running toward the middle of the head. Um, no technique different on this side from the other side. Just, you know, rinse and repeat. 
here again at the at the top of these sections i'm elevating the hair straight off the head basically to be cut and at the bottom i'm pulling it down to be cut to, to build more weight in that area it's pretty important as you're doing this that you have a lot of tension on the hair you know you don't want to see if if the hair is wavy or if it's straight like if if you're if you don't have good even tension as you're doing this you're not going to build a very clean weight line there so here you can see that the, the hair is like really stacking up on itself back there. It's really starting to push itself out. That's good. That's exactly what we were going for. So we got this like bulbous bump on the back of the haircut, like a, like a bull haircut in the back um, and a regular haircut in the front. So around the edges, I'm going to detail the haircut with scissor over comb. And essentially, I'm kind of just taking this in the same angles that I was taking my, um, my sections before, but I'm cutting the hair shorter than what I can do by holding it with my fingers. I do have a video that is all about scissor over comb. If you haven't seen that, it might be worth a watch. It's you know it's a good 15 minutes just talking about the whole technique of, of doing this. But generally speaking here, I'm kind of taking big chops because I'm taking a lot of hair off and I'm not going for the tidiest finish you've ever seen. If I wanted it super duper tidy, I would get out a clipper and put on like a number two or three guard and just drive it up here. But I wanted to have a little bit of a lived in feel because I mean, at this point you might have guessed that's kind of my signature style. Like I do these kind of lived in haircuts and a lot of my clients really are about it. I'm about it too. I think it looks nice. I'll get more into that probably in a minute. When I was um, editing this video, I felt a rant coming on about lineups and I don't know, maybe I'm gonna throw some shade at the whole barbering community by the end of this. <laughs> Is that what they say? Throw some, throw some shade when you, when you say mean things. Oh, here's a trick. Um, I find if I'm sc doing scissor over comb on the left sideburn and the ear gets in the way, I find if I have my client look straight up, it makes it a little bit easier to reach the sideburn without cutting the ear off. So there's a little pointer for you there. The same thing if you're cutting the right side of the nape, if you have the client look straight down, it really helps to get the uh, ear out of the way. So now as I'm kind of combing this around, I see some weight in the middle there where my right sections and my left sections connected. And so I'm just gonna go in and kind of dust the ends with scissor over comb to just tidy it up a little bit. I'm really just kind of like free form sculpting this until I feel like it looks pretty, you know? And it doesn't have to be like absolutely perfect because again, that's not the goal. In fact, like I've been thinking lately and I'm probably gonna word this wrong and it's gonna sound horrible, but most of my clients don't want a clean lineup. Like they don't like the look of like crispy, fresh perfection. And something that I've been thinking is it's almost like like if somebody gets cosmetic surgery, they don't want someone to go, wow, you got your lips done. That looks great. And I think when a haircut is too tidy, people compliment your haircut and they don't compliment you. But if you look at, you know, Brad Pitt and David Beckham and all these like celebrities that, that we look at for hair inspiration, they never have perfectly clean, tidy lineups and stuff either. And people, even, even though people are complimenting their hair, it's not an absolutely perfect haircut. It's not drawing attention away from them. And so sometimes I feel like these two immaculate haircuts, it's, it's like um, self-serving for the barber. It's like, hey, everyone, look how clean I cut this. To where I feel like when you leave some details a little bit kind of messy like this, it's not like saying, hey, look at the work I had done. It's just like, yeah, I look cool. Like, especially I think if you're growing your hair out long as he is, you don't want to start back at perfectly clean and fresh every couple of weeks or months or whatever. Like you kind of want to maintain that I'm growing it out feeling. And so by leaving the edges messy like this, it just helps to do that. Anyways, I spoke right over the blow drying part here. What I'm doing is pushing the hair around and moving it a lot with high heat and high power to remove the moisture. If I wanted this hairstyle to be very wavy and messy, I would continue to do it just by hand like this until the frizz goes away. But what I've done here is once the hair is dry, I'm gonna pull out a brush and this is just gonna add some kind of uniformity to the hair. The way I like to think of it is like, the more tension you use, the more polish you get, the more uniform you get. So those little hairs that you see like on his left temple that are kind of flipping away from the rest, he kind of has those all over his head. But by pulling out this brush, you can see less of it all over his head. And like, let's say if I did want to get that temple to lay perfectly, which I kind of don't care to because I think it looks cool moving like that. If I got out a brush with even more tension, I could ease, more easily get that to lay perfectly too. So more tension means more uniform. And you can see again, almost right away, as soon as I start pulling this hair around with the brush, it went from a wavy mess to a very malleable, kind of smooth, um, uniform look here. And I, you know, I like to do this near the end of the haircut to just make sure everything's crooked and make sure that when I push it around, the lines all look right. So here I switched over to a Denman style brush. This is a Vest Ceramic Pro 2000. I'm going to do a little bit of, I think this is called leafing, where you lift the hair off the head and kind of cook it into the brush like that. As I'm working through the back here, I'm going to blow dry this way bigger than I want it because generally speaking, like it's easy to put a little product in the hair and tone it down if you blow dry it too big, but it's hard, if not impossible to take flat hair, put product in it and make it bigger. 
And so I tend to always blow dry hair bigger than I want it to be and then tone it down with product. It just looks better that way and it's a hell of a lot easier. It's very, very hard to take flat hair and with product alone pump it up, but it's very easy to go in the other direction and make hair too big and then tone it down with product. Same thing in the front that I did in the back. I just want to use the brush to kind of pump up some volume around there. And overall, it's going to kind of give us this decent square shape here. You know, now he's got corners on his head. As far as product, uh, today I'm reaching for ADH Wet. Um, for a hairstyle like this, like any product should work. But I like this one because it, it really does give the hair kind of a dirty, sweaty, lived-in look. And what I'm doing with this tiny scrape of product is I'm reaching through the hair to put it mostly on the roots, which is going to help it to move more freely. If you have a bunch of products on the product on the ends, it tends to kind of stick and look spiky. But if you put it more on the root and move it around, it, it maintains that more natural flow to it. And this is just going to kind of, again, make his hair look like he kind of sweated in it for half a day. We don't need a ton because his hair is already under control. It's already managed. Like the way it's cut, it's going to lay really nicely no matter which direction it goes. So we just kind of scrunch it up, flick it around, and let it sit where it sits. So here's our end result. We uh, tidied up the edges of the haircut while maintaining the length in the front as he is growing it out. But at the same time, we took this, this giant bunch of weight that he had sitting down at the bottom of his head, and we pushed it way up over the top of the occipital bone to more or less build him a fake occipital bone out of hair. So this is just one way that I like to deal with. You know, if somebody has kind of a flat head, that's how I like to approach it. You build up extra weight in the back there, and then in the end, like, you can't even tell that there's a flat spot there. Sorry, Ryan. Sorry to put you on blast like this. You're beautiful. Thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe if you're into this sort of thing. I'm trying to do these videos weekly, so hopefully I'll see you next week.